Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hey guys, what's up? I'm your host Ryan and we back you guys. It's Batwoman season two, episode 10 and I'm so excited to be back. Look, I had some time to kill while Batwoman was off. I had to do some digging through my cabinets here and found this collectible, uh, collectible cup if I can get it out. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this, you know, in McDonald's when they used to send out these like little signature cups and this is for uh, Batman forever. So, you know, it's not Batwoman yet. Hopefully we get a Batwoman uh, collectible cup started going here. But, you know, I thought that'd be cool. That's my little my little uh, bat, uh, Batman collection there, my little bat history. Anyway, let's get into this episode, shall we? It was titled uh, Time Off for Good Behavior, by the way. So, yeah, let's dive right into this. With Batwoman starting off, you know, we're fighting the false faith, the false faith society. She's trying to take down these distribu uh, distribution centers that are holding uh, the snake bite. So we get, we even see her get to grab a news, the newswoman's mic because she's not playing. She's taking down these distribution centers. She's trying to clean up the community. We knew that was the big statement from her going into the break. So she is not playing. We also get to see her go to see Angelique. She's really trying to get Angelique to turn over these people that shot the these people that are part of the false face society that she doesn't want to give up because she wants to protect ryan so we get to see uh ryan go and see angelique and still trying to convince her to give up these guys the guys in the false face society also we learned that ryan is making good on her promise ryan slash batwoman because we saw her dressing the bat team is trying to make good on her promise of creating a community center so we get to see the open house for the community center and of course, it's not going to go off without a hitch in Gotham. We get to see this new villain sort of ish. You know, it's actually a couple, ends up being like a couple of villains, I guess you could say, making into one. But they're calling him Lightning. Uh, he has this lightning gun and they're calling him Killer Bolt. When we first kind of open up and don't really know what's going on. But, but yeah, basically tries to light this community center up right as it opens. So yeah, that's a lot of craziness going on with that. So I'm going to come back real quick to some of the community center stuff and bad one, but I want to kind of jump down to some of the other characters really quick. So for Sophie and Jake, we really have Sophie just kind of still following the black mask stuff. We get her, um, we get the, or the false, false face society stuff as well. I should add into that. We also get a moment with her and um, Julia where we get to see this moment with them where we kind of was like, is there, is there still that like that romantic tension there? Are they still talking with each other? Is there still that weirdness? But you could tell that they've obviously both, you know, moved on and it's not that, it's not that weird kind of tension between them. You can kind of tell they're just, they're just wanting to work now as part of the crows and kind of moving on. And you see Julia kind of taking Sophie through her moments where she's kind of forgetting, you know, the moments leading up to her going to find out information about Kate Kane. Like she's, she's showing up like there, there are traces of her showing up places that she doesn't remember going there, why she was in certain destinations. So there's getting to be this one, you know, there's still kind of this little baby side story going on about what's going on with Kate Kane while they're involved in Julia, where it's like Julia's having these memory lapses and she doesn't really know what's going on. So we come to find out to kind of go off on uh, Julia's tip here. We come to find out that Enigma is actually working as a doctor for the snake bite for the crows. So we ended up, we are, we um, know by now that Enigma, she got this thing where she got to come wipe out people's minds. You know, you ain't remember nothing if you see Enigma. So when she finds out, so you kind of see Julia kind of going down this path with a little help of Alice as well. That kind of Alice kind of gave her a call was like, look, I need to find Enigma. I know who's been, I want my memory wiped for another reason. But we kind of see Julia going down this path where she figures out what's going on with Enigma and this doctor. But of course she gets too close to the situation, too smart for her, whole, for her own good, if you want to say. And Enigma ends up dosing her with this little pen that's on her cane, which by the way, what the cane is like off the chart. Like I ain't never seen a cane hooked up like this. But anyway, so she ends up taking her out with the cane and she ends up deciding that she wants to uh, go off and go to Berlin. So she ends up transferring herself to Berlin and Sophie can kind of tell something's a little weird, but she doesn't really know what's going on. So we ended, so Julia might be out of the picture for a, minute, a little bit. We're definitely worried about what's going on with that. Cause she was the only one that knew Enigma is walking around with the crows right now. Also too, while I'm on, um, Sophie, uh, Sophie and Jake, I don't know if I want to, I mentioned as well too. Uh, Jake, by the way, got hit with a snake bite at the opening of this and ends up, going on this weird hallucination while he's sitting in his car and ends up getting to relive what he wanted to do, what he wanted to say Beth when she was kidnapped, when she was a little kid. 
So he's starting to get addicted to the snake bite now, which is like, dude, you got no problems. You don't need to be addicted to the snake bite. But we find out the power, some more of the powers of the snake bite, the hallucination, people being able to redo things that they feel guilty about, things in their past that they wish they could fix. So, you know, that's all a, uh, all a part of an addiction and stuff that he's been in. We know he's carrying a lot now as a father, just losing one daughter after, after the other. Mary hates him because he shut down her clinic. And he does try to go and repair that, that uh, relationship. One thing that enigma tries to do you know as she's running around here uh, tripping up messing up people's lives she tries to get him to repair the relationship with mary he doesn't do a very good job because he just wants to throw money and make it legit he doesn't understand mary why mary wants to help out or how she wants her clinic to be run so he fails at that at that uh, moment but yeah we just see him ending with he's definitely addicted to the snake bite so we're gonna see what kind of craziness this gets him him into or where this kind of ends so yeah it's gonna be rough for him so that's what we kind of leave with Sophie, Jake, uh, Julia. Also, I want to um, I want to talk about Alice some more here, too, while we're in this segment. Like I said, Alice calls Julia to try to figure out because she's she's find out, OK, their enigma is tied to these memory losses that I have. We know Alice is very much figuring out how powerful her mind is. A lot of things has happened to her that she's not willing to go ahead and face because at this point. You know, Batwoman is not gunning after her anymore. What is what is a real threat to her anymore besides dealing with her inner demons? Inner demons is I think is what's happened with Alice. So Alice is trying to find a way to keep running from these demons. So she wants to get her memory away. She wants to get a wipe so she can leave Gotham. So she enlists Julia's help. So that's how we go down this train of figuring out about Enigma. We also see Alice going to Enigma's office. And um, because, you know, Nigma is now in this psychology role, has an office and everything, at, like I said, at the Crows. So we get to see her go in the office. She's here's the tape by Jake because Jake does have a session with Enigma where he's revealing going through how he wish he had did things differently and why the snake bite had that effect on him. But Alice is like, look, I, you know, she's not one for the let me go back and forgive dad moments and stuff. So she's like, I'm just going to erase the tape, keep it moving. So, you know, we didn't exactly get that resolution for Alice, but she's still working with the, you know, running as much as she can from trying to forgive people and let these old demons go. So we'll see where her story ends up there. All right. So let me get back to Batwoman here and sort of the in the sort of the main new villain we have for this episode. So uh, basically, you find out that, you know, all these different community centers, different outreach programs they have for children in Gotham are getting, you know, they're getting shot at, they're getting burnt down. Somebody's trying to stop there being centers of hope for at-risk children in Gotham. So we meet we meet this reporter who works for the Gazette and apparently has found that there's a there's like a villainous connection to all these uh, children's centers getting shut down. You're like, okay, well, why are they going? There's no money at these centers most of the time, not a lot of money. And it's like, why are they going after these different centers where they're trying to open and help the youth? So we ended up finding out they are the bat team ends up finding out that the killer, this killer boat dude is actually goes by the name Mickey K, which leads them to find out that um, the Edgewater Correctional Facility, you remember, this is the facility too where Angelique is at right now. They are actually letting criminals go so they could get a kickback from the city to go around and destroy these kid centers because, you know, the whole point of these kids is at risk um, or these centers that help at risk children is to keep them from going down a path, keep them from doing violence. But, you know, that's bad for the prisons. Go figure. So this um, the guy that is the CEO of the correctional facility is letting all these criminals go because he gets he gets a kickback, a money kickback for each criminal that he lets out to do this destruction. And they get um, time off their sentence, early parole. So, yeah, great guy. Right. So we figure out that's kind of our our new villain for this episode. The thing with these lightning guns, though, was crazy. All those all those fight scenes we had there with Batwoman. She was like just having to dodge those things left and right. Um, the guy, there's a reporter that's starting to help her out from the Gazette. Uh, that ends up getting hit and he might be an ally. You know, I like how they use in the episode. Maybe she's found her lowest lane. Somebody that can kind of help her get all the stories out, because once they caught the guy and ended up locking him up, they, you know, she also, it was also reported in the Gazette. So I love how they're kind of using the media to intertwine with Batwoman, because, you know, sometimes it's the only way you can get some of these messages out about what's going on in the community. So I definitely thought that was interesting with their relationship going on right there. By the name, the actor, by the way, the actor's name is um, Jamie M. Kalika. And I don't know if you guys are big fans, big Christmas fans of Merry Little Christmas, had Kelly Rowland in it, one of my favorite Christmas movies, way past Christmas. It's just that I throw it out there that I thought it was cool to see him in something a little different when he popped up on the scene. But yeah, so maybe she'll have somebody to kind of get her message out and kind of help her along as we go as we go uh, forward. 
So that was that. All the way, I got to give Luke a shout out from the bat team because Luke showed up with even more press of uh, lightning, uh, lightning gun that he had amped up a little bit to kind of save that woman because she was in this, this caught up in this triangle at one moment where all these criminals were pointing lightning guns at her. And we were like, Lord, that suit cannot take all that. So he came and saved the day. Maybe there's a superhero in Luke's future. You never know. It's really cool to see him pop up like that. But yeah, now before we completely wrap this up, I got to mention another key point to Batwoman story. We know Ryan finally, we, uh, well, we don't know, I don't mention that yet, but Ryan does get Angel Angelique to eventually give up these false face society um, criminals so she could get out of prison. So the Crows are, and you know, Sophie are willing to keep her in protective custody so they figure out, they find Black Mask. But unfortunately, the car gets taken over by the false, or the, the false face society comes, shoots the car up, get Angelique out. So Angelique is gone, disappeared, part of the False Face Society. My guess is, remember, we learned also in the episode, False Face Society doesn't have anybody now to mix up their ingredients for the snake bite. So they're having issues getting their product through. So that's my whole thinking of why Angelique was kidnapped. So, you know, hopefully we don't have a bad ending to the story. But there, there we go again with, you know, Ryan, Batwoman, still on this Angelique trail of how they're going to get her out, how they're going to save her, how we're going to find Black Mass. So that's kind of where we leave off with that. So, yeah, there we go, guys. We're back in the game. It was episode 10. Uh, also, I want to say, guys, I saw a Fast and Furious reference for the next episode. So I am so excited. I cannot wait to talk about it. Do you guys know anything Fast and Furious? I can't wait. So we're going to see how episode 11 goes. Thank you, guys. And I look forward to your comments. And, yeah, we back. Bye, guys. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.